happy Tuesday. This is So What, where we talk about what we're sewing. And as I was pre preparing for today's show, it occurred to me that I haven't heard about what you're sewing in quite a while. So as you're coming on and saying hello, drop me a line and let me know what you're working on. Are you working on holiday stuff already? Are you working on stuff that's been in your sewing queue for a while and working on finishing those things up so we can get to gift making and all of those good things? What are you sewing? This is also the place to ask your questions. What do you need help with? What have you been working on that is challenging for you? This is where we all work together and come up with solutions for those kinds of issues. So let me know and we will be having some Q&As throughout the episode today. So I want to address all of those things. And, you know, I learn something new every week on So What from all of you and your great tips that you provide. So in the spirit of that, make sure that you are commenting and active in the live chat and uh, we will get your questions answered and we will um, have a nice chat today. So as we are moving further into the fall season and all of those great leaves are changing color and here in Colorado, you know, sometimes those winds pick up and this morning um, it was raining leaves everywhere. So it's not going to be very much longer um, that we get to enjoy all of those great fall colors and so today's project is a way to keep those great fall leaves and those fall colors with us throughout the season, even when the trees start to become bare. So we're going to be going over a great little project that, honestly, you can complete this in an afternoon and you can make it more or less complicated. And by complicated, I mean add more or less leaves, add a different phrase, um, add as much embroidery and thread work as you want. And if hand embroidery isn't really your thing, you can also add machine embroidery to this project and just hoop it in one of our great German wooden embroidery hoops and display it just like you would a wreath on your front door or really anywhere in your home. So I'm going to go over this project with you uh, momentarily. First, I want to announce that yet again, we are partnering with Sally Tomato for a New Year's Eve sew along this year. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about webcasts and video casts and all of the great education opportunities that Sulky provides on our education platform, which is sewingonline.sulky.com. Not to be confused with sulky.com because those are two different websites. So on our education platform, we were chit-chatting about all of those great virtual opportunities that we have. And a number of you said, hey, are we doing New Year's Eve again? And I kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit back then a couple of weeks ago, but now I am officially going to let you all know that this year on New Year's Eve 2021, we will be ringing in the new year with the Aurora bag. This is a brand new bag designed by Sally Tomato specifically for this event. And not only are we going to learn how to make this bag from start to finish in a sew along all together, but we're also going to go over how to make a really cool freestanding patch that you can embellish your bag with or other projects. And it looks awesome in the faux leather that you will have left over from making your Aurora bag. So we have, whoopsies, <laughs> we have Sewing Men's the Soul. This is one of the patch designs. We have Sewaholic. This is another one of the designs. And we have, this might be my favorite, I'm not sure, I made this. So I'm going to be going over the machine embroidery demo during New Year's Eve. 
And then Jessica Barrera from Sally Tomato is going to go over the full bag construction in real time. So we can all sew together. And at the end of the sew along, you will have this great finished bag that you can take out and party on the town or however you like to spend your New Year's Eve because we also changed up the time of this event. Last year, we started at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and we finished at midnight, and we toasted together. Uh, we did a countdown and all of those fun things. Well, this year, we thought that some of you might actually be going out for New Year's because, you know, it's a little bit different than it was last year. We also thought, well, it was hard for us to even stay up that late sewing. <laughs> we know that some of you decided to watch the end of the sew along the next day because of the sheer fact that, you know, it was midnight. And uh, so we decided to start our sew along at noon on New Year's Eve. That's Eastern time. So if you are in a different time zone, take that into account and back up from that or fast forward from that to make sure that you are joining us live. So you can register for the New Year's Eve sew along today. It is offered at a special price until November 15th. So you will get um, a pretty good deal on the sew along, only $5.99 if you register early. Once you register, you will get that Aurora bag pattern completely for free, included with purchase of the event. You will also get the embroidery design files for the three patches. So that's about a $20 value that you're getting for $5.99, plus you get the four hour sew along event. So really, really good deal, great value. There is a kit available, Sally Tomato is fulfilling those kits. At sallytomato.com you will find the Aurora kit in this beautiful blue and purple color. And we also have a red color. And it's this really pretty ice dyed fabric um, really trendy right now, and the faux leather matches either one. So with the blue version, you will get navy, and with the red version, you will get like a tannish brown. So both are absolutely beautiful, and I cannot wait to put this together. All right, for those of you who do not have an embroidery machine, you can select the base kit, which does not come with the embroidery supplies, but it does come with a pre-made patch. So even if you don't have an embroidery machine, you will still be able to add a patch to your bag or put it on something else that you have made and strut your stuff. All right, so that is my spiel um, about New Year's Eve. And we will be talking about that later as we move forward. But I wanted to give you all a heads up because the uh, kit is on sale and the event is on sale only until November 15th. So go on and make sure that you register early so that you can get all access to the event. You can get the special price on the kit and all of those good things. Plus, you know, who knows what's going on with the mail system these days. So we want to make sure that you get your kit in time to sew along with us on December 31st. It feels crazy to talk about December 31st, but you all know it will be here before we know it. So if you, uh, let's see, if, sorry, I'm trying to keep up with the chat here. Um, and I don't know what I was going to say. So I apologize. I got a little distracted. I was going to look in the chat. Good deal on the sew along. Hi, Betsy. Gorgeous kit. I know. Um, so here's what I was going to say. If you joined us for New Year's Eve last year, give me a thumbs up, heart emoji, something like that, and let me know. I would love to see you come and join us again. It's going to be a great time. Oh, also, last year we did a Roaring Twenties theme. We were going on with the 2020, 2021, um, you know, play on the 20s. We dressed up as flapper girls, and it was super fun. This year... We are going with a pajama party theme. You know, since we're going to be doing this a little bit earlier in the day, you can wake up, stay in your pajamas, and join us for a comfy, cozy afternoon. 
that is also a play on the name of the bag, Aurora. So uh, Jessica always names her patterns um, after classic movie characters. I just love that about Sally Tomato. It's so fun. Uh, so this one is named after Sleeping Beauty. So you see how we all, it all comes together um, and, you know, works together. So yes, you'll have to get up early. That's 8 a.m. for you. So, um, you know, once you sign up, you can add it to your Google Calendar with just one click and it will, should populate in the time zone that you're in. So a little bit less work on your party, but on your part. So, okay. Deb, good morning. Hearts to you. Good to see you. All right. So let's move forward with our thankful and grateful project. Again, this is what I'm going to be showing you how to make. It's super easy. You know, sometimes we just need some inspiration uh, to kickstart our creativity. And um, what inspired me to make this project was... A couple of years ago, we did a rainbow um, leaf wreath, and that was by um, Rebecca Greco of Hugs Are Fun, and she does a lot of really beautiful projects, and she created that one for us, and it was hoop art um, made out of felt, and she did these really small leaves all in rainbow colors encircling the hoop and did hand embroidery to attach them all. So I saw that and I thought, let's do that out of autumn leaves. So maple leaves and uh, all different kinds of fall leaves and trees and stuff that you see around right now. So I created a new template for the leaves. You can grab that on the Sulky blog for free. Print it out. And you'll have a, a sheet of leaf templates you can choose from, small and large. And you can kind of create your own, um, you know, leaf wreath um, in the way that you want. So I'm going to go over a little bit of inspiration, how you can kind of put a twist on this and make it your own. And then we will do some stitches and I'll show you how easy this easily this comes together. All right. So first off, like I said, whoops you're going to gather your supplies. So this is what the leaf template looks like when you print it out. And you also need a really great embroidery hoop. This is an eight inch hoop because I was working with pre-cut wool felt sheets and they fit perfectly in the eight inch hoop. If you want to do something larger, you just need to compensate for that with your background felt size. OK, and I found this grouping of um, really pretty wool felt from an Etsy seller. Um, it was already packaged together. It was her fall wool felt bundle. So that's where I found it. Um, you could also use craft felt. Um, you'll just need to kind of hoop it a little bit um, looser at first so that you can fit that thicker craft felt in your hoop that's perfectly fine. Uh, so you choose the felt that speaks to you. You could probably use any fabric, honestly, for the background, but I find that wool felt has a great texture to it. You can get those marbled colors uh, that are so pretty as well. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're choosing your felt. You also need some ribbon to hang this up and you will need some sulky cotton petites. This is the thread that we use for handwork, and it's a 12 weight cotton thread. It comes in these beautiful blendables. You see that? Blendables are randomly dyed every two and a half to five inches across the thread length. So you're not going to get any repeating color variations like you might with a traditional variegated thread. So that's why blendables are so unique and so awesome to use for hand embroidery, cross stitch. If you're doing handwork that has some fill stitches in it, you get really pretty effects. It looks like you swapped out your thread color um, 
quite frequently and you're using one spool. So I used one spool for the whole project and it looks different across the entire work. So this is a really pretty color. It's called Autumn, so that works well. And then this one is called Milk Chocolate. So either one of these would work or choose a blendable that works with your felt colors that you have chosen. We've got really pretty yellow blendables, oranges, um, but I just went with Autumn and Milk Chocolate. This um, that I'm showing you here, the thankful that I did was out of Milk Chocolate. And then the sample I'm going to do right now, which is going to say grateful, is going to be done out of that autumn color. All right. So then you've just got to cut out however many leaves you want to showcase on your hoop art. So for the thankful, um, I did nine leaves along the top, all in different felt colors. So if you have a scrap bin of great felt, you can do a lot of different colors. You could make this um, tone on tone and do all one color of felt for the leaves. And then when you add the stitches to it, it will make each one of them pop and look a little different. So that's entirely up to you, however many leaves you wanna use and how many you wanna cut and in what size. So I've got some right here that I can show you on our new sample, already cut out and ready to go. That's the other great thing about felt is we don't have to finish the edges. So no raveling or anything. So I just cut them out, use them as my template, as you can see, easy peasy. And now it's about arranging the leaves. So I place these in all sorts of different arrangements just to give you some ideas for what you want to showcase. So obviously, you know, my thankful hoop art, I have a cluster along the top here, but it also looks really pretty around the edge like a more traditional wreath. Now, if you want to position some of your leaves along the hoop edge and they're not necessarily even touching the felt, that's completely fine. You don't actually even need stitches there. So what I did for this one, see how it's not really connected? I added my stitches to it without going through the base fabric or the fabric that is hooped so that it looks like I have still stitched through that portion, but it's really only going through that one layer of felt that is the leaf. So hopefully that makes sense. As long as the majority of your leaf is tacked down to that background fabric, you can do that along those edges and still have them have some dimension and have them um, going beyond that hoop edge. I also wanted to mention those German wooden embroidery hoops at sulky.com are the best quality hoops I've ever worked with. They are super strong. They don't get brittle. They don't warp out of shape like some of those that you find at the craft store. Um, they're only one or two dollars more expensive than the ones you would find in the craft store, but completely worth it, especially for a project like this that you're going to actually display in the hoop as well. So not only does it keep everything nice and taut and without warping during your stitch out, but then it makes a really great hanger or frame for the finished work. All right, so here is what, you know, a cluster could look like if you wanted to do this like a more traditional wreath. Oh, excuse me, I got a little out of order. This is just a regular old Elmer's glue stick. So if you get a pleasing arrangement, you can kind of tack them down using a glue stick uh, so that they don't move around while you are working along the work. Another great thing to use is the Sulky KK2000, our temporary spray adhesive. Um, you don't want any overspray on your felt background so you would take your leaf and kind of spray it off to the side, just a little mist, and then position it where you want on the hoop. And that's what I'm gonna do for this grateful sample uh, that I'll work on in just a moment. But I wanna go back to the arrangements. So this is the arrangement that I ended up doing for the thankful example along the top, but also could look really pretty along one side edge, right? 
or along the bottom. Um, you know, it, instead of writing thankful or grateful or it's fall, y'all, or something like that, you could also just do your last name or a really pretty monogram along the top and then have your cluster of leaves down along the lower edge of the hoop frame. And then I just kind of had a lot of fun with it and did some clusters um, in little groupings um, in like a quadrant. Um, you know, they do say in design work that um, a lot of times odd numbers look better than even numbers. So after I did the cluster of four, I took one away and kind of spread them out and it looked much better as a cluster of three. So, you know, experiment, do a bunch of different looks um, and then remove. Um, that's another good rule of thumb is start out with more than you, you think you're going to need as far as the leaves go and then take away, edit yourself. You know, sometimes, you know, coming up with this, I was like, I started out and I cut 36 leaves and I ended up with nine. So, you know, you can always go big and then edit yourself. Um, sometimes less is more and sometimes more is more. So it's really up to you. <laughs> All right. So then the stitching begins. Now, I simply did a line down the center of each leaf using some running stitches. And you can see my stitches are pretty long. And then I outlined each leaf really just to tack it down. That's all I did. You could certainly add a lot more stitches to this. You could do more kind of um, satin stitch handwork if you want. Um, but in the spirit of keeping this quick and easy and getting up some cute new fall decor, simple running stitch is really all it takes. All right, I'm gonna end on number 13. I should be able to remember that. So I'm just gonna kind of, now that I gave you the overview, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to do it in real time. I just have my threaded needle. I've got my, see this pretty like heathered color of felt? I absolutely love it. It just gives it a whole new dimension. Um, I'm going to see if there are any questions. Amy says three, five, or seven. Yes. Good rule of thumb. Go with an odd number of leaves. Um, I went with nine and overlapped them, making sure that no color um, was right next to another color. But if you are doing that tone on tone look, um, just do all one color of leaf and then use that blendables thread to tack them down and it would look so cool. All right, tips for overspray of Sulky KK2000. Thank you, Esther, that's a great idea. All right. Okay, I think we're caught up. Did you embroider the thankful first prior to placing the leaves in the hoop? I did not, I embroidered it after um, but that's completely up to you. You'll see as well, one of my leaves is going into the H. I tacked down my leaves first and then I placed uh, my words and I just started and stopped right where that leaf overlapped. But if you want to put your phrase in the center and then add your leaves around it, that is very smart as well. Um, it's completely up to you. Again, that might give you a better idea of where to place your leaves because you know how much room you need for your phrase, especially if you're going to do um, a monogram that might be larger um, or if you want to do a lot of leaves, you'll need to make sure that your phrase is going to fit. So for this, now I only had one eight inch hoop. So that's what this guy is displayed in. I'm now using a six inch hoop just for the demo here, um, but also very cute in the six inch hoop, right? So what I did was for this, I measured out two inches and marked it off with a blue marker. 
see that? I'm using like a scrap piece of the leaf um, template. So I measured two inches and then I just wrote thankful within those two inches so that I knew it was gonna be spaced properly. Um, you can also measure side to side so that you fit your wording within your available space for your hoop. So for the six inch hoop, I did an inch and a half. I measured an inch and a half and then I wrote grateful in between so that I knew it was spaced properly. And then if I audition it on my hoop, then I will know where I can place my leaves to still have room for the words. But let's take, oh yeah, wording could be placed on a curve. Really great idea, thank you. So I'm gonna take the clue from you all and I'm gonna do the wording first this time. And I've got to tell you, if you happen to have a light box, super handy for transferring things like freehand wording, okay? And if you don't, let me just tell you, put this puppy on your wish list for the holidays. All right, we have these at sulky.com. There's a medium size and a large size and it's the Daylight Wafer Light Box. Look how thin this thing is. It's like, I have it on hand like a notebook next to my sewing area. I use it for so many things, but it's really great for transferring things like this lettering. The other thing I like about this light box is when you turn it on, it'll be at full power. Let's say you have a little bit of sensitive eyes, you can turn it down simply by leaving your hand on the power button or leaving your finger on the power button until it is the right um, amount of light for you. Then when you go to turn it back on, it remembers that setting for you so you don't have to go and redo it. I know, isn't that cool? I'm gonna go full power with it though. And this is how I'm gonna transfer that lettering for the grateful that I'm going to add to the hoop. So I'm going to place this underneath my hoop in the spot where I want it. I'm just gonna go right in the center this time. My thankful, I positioned a little bit lower towards the hoop lower edge, but since I'm doing the lettering first, I'm gonna go right in the center. And I'm just gonna place a pin through my template so it doesn't go anywhere. And this is a little bit darker, whoa, darker felt than what I used for the thankful. So you could see, I can't see through it at all, but I put it on my light box and there it is. And I know you can't see it because I don't have this overhead camera, but it makes it so much easier. And to transfer it, I am just going to use a friction highlighter pen. Did you know that they made highlighter pens as well? A friction highlighter pen um, is removed with heat from an iron. Now, you might be asking, you're going to iron wool felt? You are crazy. But I'm just gonna take the tip of, an, of the iron and run it right across my letters when my stitching is complete and it will take it off. So, very cool. I'm gonna try and get this recentered because it was not quite centered since I did it by hand. But yes, these friction highlighter pens are so neat. Um, what I like about them is they don't have a very sharp point on them. And so for something like this, you don't want that sharp point to kind of indent the felt. Um, you want it to just, you know, disappear when you remove it, so. All right, I have half of the design transferred. 
and I will show it to you momentarily. And if some of you are saying, hey, we wish we could see what you're doing. Why don't you have an overhead camera? And my answer to you is, we do do a lot of sew alongs and video casts on our education platform where we have multiple cameras set up and you can see everything that we're doing. So you can sign up for our New Year's Eve video cast and you will see everything that we're doing in multiple camera views. You can also sign up for our next video cast, which is the Wilderness Wonder. And I will have all of my cameras set up for that so you can see everything that I'm doing. All right. I have the entire grateful phrase now transferred. It's a little difficult to see on this heathered felt, but I just need to be able to see it enough to sew over it. I'm just going to go over my marks again so that it's a little easier for you all to see. And it was really a game changer when I found out that they had these highlighter pens um, by this friction, Pilot Friction. All right, so that's a little bit easier to see. I went over it a second time. So now I can place my leaves around my little word. And I will know exactly how many leaves I can use and where they can go. And honestly, I'm not even going to audition these. I'm just going to start spraying and placing them. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully it's cute. I'm going to kind of follow suit with what I did with the thankful um, version and place them along the upper edge. So you don't need very much of the KK2000. Can you see? I just sprayed it very, very lightly, and that is all I need. I've already got one on here. See how it's not going anywhere? And KK2000 is air soluble. So it's going to dissipate on its own in about 36 to 48 hours, and it's just really cool. All right, I think another one, maybe I'll do five on this one. Maybe I'll do three. We'll see what it looks like. You all can tell me. I think I at least need two more because I've got a little gap along the upper edge there and maybe some longer ones hanging down closer to the words. That's the other thing about KK2000 is once you place something, it's not permanent. You can lift it up and move it. If you're like, oh no, I didn't, don't really want that there anymore. Just lift it up and move it and it's no big deal. All right, I'm gonna try one more, I think, and try to overlap these differently. And then you guys can tell me if I have enough here. And something like this, you know, we don't have to get too serious with it, you know? It's just a fun, quick project, and we don't have to have it be absolutely perfect. This is kind of cute. How are we looking? Ooh, poinsettia leaves for Christmas. That's a great idea. You can definitely change this up for so many different holidays. Like I said, this started out as a summer project featuring just these little leaves in rainbow colors. And I looked at that and I thought, why don't we do this out of fall leaves? So that's how it happened. You can really get lost in the rabbit hole of this as well. <laughs> and by that, I mean changing and rearranging um, these leaves 
until the cows come home, really. So I'm going to try and just be satisfied at a certain point. And that's pretty cute. All right. I think this looks maybe a little bit more balanced. You all let me know. All right. Love the idea. Egg shapes for Easter. I didn't even think of that. That's a really great idea. All right. And see, I just keep fiddling and keep fiddling until you get it where you want it. All right. So let's get to some sewing of this. Now, I'm sure you've all done handwork sometime in your life. Maybe that's the craft that you prefer. Um, but for those of you who have always done machine sewing, or maybe this is your first project, this would be a, a great first project. I learned how to hand sew first before I ever touched a machine, and it gave me a really good understanding of how stitches are formed um, and different stitches, different stitch patterns to create. Uh, so it's a really great thing for kids. You could put this activity on their Thanksgiving plate at the kids' table and maybe have all the leaves and, and their name and have it almost, you know, ready to sew and they can just pick it up and start stitching. And that would be really fun as well. So I'm gonna start with the uppermost leaf and I'm gonna tack it down the center using those running stitches. So I'm gonna come up from underneath the fabric and I've got two strands of the cotton petites in my needle. You could do one if you don't want as pronounced of a stitch than that, but I've got two strands and it looks really cool with the blendables. So come up from the wrong side of the hoop and you know what? You can knot it or you can leave long thread tails and weave those into the work along the back side. That's what I did for the thankful project. You can see that I, I did some weaving of the thread tails and that just ensures that you don't have any knots on your work. But for something like this, when I'm going through one, two, three, four layers of wool felt, a knot really isn't gonna make a difference. So I've knotted it just for ease of showing you the tutorial as well. All right, so I'm gonna take a long stitch and just start going forward. And if you want, you can definitely mark your stitching path before you start sewing using that friction highlighter pen or any removable marking pen, just make sure that your pen is going to be removed on the wool felt because sometimes if you use like a chalk pencil on wool felt, it's a little bit harder to remove. So that's why I like using just the tip of the iron um, along only where I marked it to remove it. All right, so you just wanna make sure to try and evenly space your running stitches along the center of your leaves. And then when I'm done doing the center line, the leaf vein down the center, then I will stitch the perimeter of the leaf. So I'm just gonna do one more stitch here. And this way, I have not only secured my topmost leaf, but I'm catching a little bit of those other ones as well because of the way that I layered them. So you could see just how easy this starts coming together. And if you want, you can do all the center veins of each leaf, then come around and work left to right and do all of your perimeter stitches like that. It's completely up to you the order in which you would like to do your stitching. Again, we are not taking this too seriously. It's a fun, relaxing project. You could do this while you're multitasking and, you know, watching your favorite show or listening to some music or sitting outside and enjoying the fall scenery. So no need to take anything too seriously here. You know, sewing is all about fun. And if it stops being fun, then we take a break from it and we come back. You know, if we get frustrated with ourselves, I'm always telling my kids, you know, 
if this game is frustrating you or whatever it is, put it down. Come back to it later. Come back with a fresh mindset, you know? All right, so I am, I just decided to go down the center leaf vein of each leaf and follow the curves of the outer portion of the leaf, um, you know, to kind of frame your phrase or your word or your last name or your monogram um, in a pleasing arrangement. And if you get off track or it's not as straight as you want or the leaves are not perfectly or the stitches are not perfectly spaced, you know, either just keep going with it because look, leaves in nature are not perfect. So our leaves don't have to be perfect either. Or, of course, you can just snip it off and redo it because, look, it's not taking that much time to get it how you want it. All right, so I've got two leaves done with just the, those center lines, and I would just continue on. Now, for the lettering, I did back stitches. A back stitch is where you begin the stitch and go forward with one stitch, okay? And then the next time, so I'm going forward with one stitch along my line, then I'm going to go beyond that stitch. There's my needle poking out. I'm going beyond that stitch, and then I'm gonna go back where I just came out, creating a line of stitches. So there you can see my line of stitches started and that's going to give me a continuous line of stitches across the lettering. Whereas a running stitch has these spaces in between the stitches. So that's the difference there. And again, you can create any stitch pattern that you like using any hand embroidery stitches that you prefer. So I will just show you a little bit closer up since many of you could not see, um, well, none of you could see me tracing and using that light box. So I'll show you the photos of that so you can get a little bit closer, better view. So here is my phrase or my, you know, thankful word uh, that I just hand drew on that piece of scrap paper. And then here is me using that light box so you can see um, well, even taking a photo of a light box is a little difficult, but you could see the lettering through that fabric so much easier using that light box. It's just a game changer. Again, put that on your Christmas list um, or just grab one for yourself right now. Why not? All right. Oops, this is upside down. Well, there's the, uh, <laughs> there is thankful transferred to the felt upside down. All right. <laughs> and here's what those back stitches look like really up close along the lines of the lettering. Um, another thing is if you don't want to freehand your word or your monogram, go on your computer and find a really cool font that you like and print it out and then transfer that font um, onto your felt. So you don't have to have the best handwriting in the world, um, or it would be really cute to have one of your kids or grandkids write it, and then it's in their handwriting, and then you're preserving that in stitches, and that would be just so cute and a great heirloom, a great gift to give to the parents of that child as well. So here is the finished work, and we've just got to finish up our hoop and make that look pretty so that we can hang it up. So this is all the embroidery is done. You could see the leaves almost look like they have like a trapunto effect. Um, in fact, when I was done with this, I thought to myself, that would be really cute to add a little bit of batting inside each leaf. So basically you would just hand sew the outside perimeter of the leaf, put a tiny little bit of batting inside, and then when you do your center vein stitching, that would kind of tack the batting 
inside of that leaf and they would puff up a little bit. So it would give you this trapunto effect and even more dimension um, with your uh, wall hanging or your, your hoop art. So that's another cool idea you could try. And then here is the lettering with the friction pen removed. So again, I just took the very tip of the iron, made sure it was not too hot, and just ran the tip down the, um, not down the stitching, but down the, um, down the markings, and they just disappear with heat from an iron. All right, so now we've got to trim up the rest of the felt that is extending beyond the hoop. And normally when we're working with a fabric that's lighter weight than felt, we would want to give ourselves more of a border um, so that the fabric doesn't slip out of the hoop. Well, number one, we're using the high quality German wooden embroidery hoop. So there's no slipping out of here that's going to happen unless you undo the hoop screw. So number two, we're using a heavier weight wool felt. So it's much more stable than let's say a quilting cotton would be. The other thing, number three, is that it's not going to fray. So we can cut it rather close to that outer hoop ring and not have any fear that it's going to show, that it's going to fray, that it's going to um, not look finished, right? So I cut it rather close, you can see, and you can't see it at all from the right side. So if I fold it back ever so slightly, see how it just covers that outer hoop? That's where I trimmed it. If you want, and you're going to make this a permanent um, hoop art, meaning you will not take this out year over year and replace it with something or use your hoop for something else, you can run a line of glue or glue stick, or not glue stick, um, hot glue around here and just secure that felt to the outer hoop ring. And then that would stay nice and pretty year over year, especially for giving it as a gift. Um, the other thing you can do when you are gluing that is you can add a pretty piece of ribbon or trim along that outer edge just to finish it along the wrong side. And if you want, you can extend your pretty trim ever so slightly beyond that outer hoop ring. It's kind of hard to show because I didn't put it on here, but if you have a pretty piece of lace like this, you could extend that edge a little slightly and have it trimmed out a little bit. So that would be a really pretty kind of pico edge to add um, just another little something to the project. So dive into those trim bins. Um, you can even use a piece of trim as your hanging loop. You don't necessarily have to use a piece of ribbon. So think outside the box. All right, and then there is our finished hoop art. This is on my front door. Uh, you can make your ribbon as long or as short as you need and it just looks really, really pretty. And I love all of your suggestions for taking this and making it your own. That is what this is all about. You know, we take inspiration, um, we see something in a store or we see something on Pinterest or um, someone's wearing something and then we go and we incorporate little bits and pieces of that into our own creations and make it our own. Um, that's a lot of where I get my inspiration. Honestly, when people ask me, where do you get your inspiration for things? It is literally everywhere. Everything that surrounds me. You know, I saw a really cute pumpkin on somebody's uh, doorstep step the other day when I was driving to school to pick up my kids. And um, it had these sort of plastic teeth hanging out of it. And it just made me think of a really cute embroidery collection I could make with pumpkins with all kinds of different crazy teeth, you know, like buck teeth and, um, you know, witch's teeth and fangs. And I mean, that would just be so cute. So anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent, 
but you all get the idea. And you're all saying, you know, let's make this for Hanukkah. Let's make this for Christmas. Let's make this for Thanksgiving next year and put boo on it and have pumpkins and, you know, ghouls and goblins around it. So you can do so many things with this and make hoop art for any occasion. All right. And yes, everyone's ideas for this embroidery hoop, you know, you could make one for every single month and just unhoop it, put the next one in, hang it on your door. Unhoop it, put the next one in, hang it on your door. You know, you could make this thing last the whole year. Okay, <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> All right, Don says some dried flowers or wheat would look nice glued to the frame. Absolutely. And you know, if you do make one for Christmas or the winter holidays, you could put some greenery along the top, maybe like um, a mistletoe or something along the top, um, and then a cute little holiday phrase. So entirely up to you um, how you want to. Oh, great idea, Denise. Would make a nice circle-shaped table centerpiece too. Absolutely. You could put this anywhere. Cornucopia items. Yes, there is actually a little squash um, and a little acorn included um, on your leaf template. So you could see, you know, you can use this little acorn, put the little squash. You could do any kind of combination of those leaves that you like. So again, lots of different options. All right. So Speaking of video casts and webcasts and all these great education opportunities that we have at sewingonline.sulky.com, this is our next video cast and we are going live with it on November 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. It is the Wilderness Wonder Applique video cast and we have lots of different kits and patterns and options for you um, to participate in the video cast. So make sure you register for that today. I included some other images of um, the other options that you can create with the Wilderness Wonder applique pre-printed fabric panels. Oh my gosh, my computer is doing crazy things. Okay. Are we still, are you still with me? Okay, good. I thought it was shutting down, but we're still live. All right. So we have this deer option and that's where I was going with it. We have created some pre-printed fabric panels that have all the shapes already outlined and in the correct colors for you to follow to put together your deer, elk, or moose applique. So we're taking away all the need to trace all of those pattern pieces and you can create this awesome work of art in a fraction of the time it would take you if you had to trace all of those templates. So here is an image of the elk. Also, if you grab up one of the full kits, which include the pre-printed fabric panel, the pattern, the fusible web, which is the brand new sulky perfect applique fusible web, I know. It also comes with a six pack of 50 weight cotton thread. It is called our Wilderness Wonder Thread Assortment. You get all of those things if you purchase the full kit. In we get your applique pieces. So if you use your pre-printed fabric panel and then you want to go make something else or reuse it again, you will then have all of those template pieces. You also get the key that you will use to assemble your large scale animal applique and a bonus quilt pattern. So this is the bonus quilt pattern. For the video cast, we will really be focusing on the applique itself. If you want to create that bonus quilt pattern, you will need all of those extra fabrics and then you can go through the pattern yourself and create this larger quilt. I'm also going to show you how to do a whole cloth a quilt version using your animal applique, um, really making it the focal point of the piece. And then I will also show you how to take your key and create a smaller piece. 
So let me show you a photo of that when I get to it. But here is the deer looking lovely in that full quilt, uh, quilt pattern and the moose. So really, really awesome. And this quilt pattern, which is again, the bonus pattern that comes with your kit, um, the bonus pattern quilt measures 72 inches square. So it's the same pattern for any one of the animals that you choose. It's just if you choose the moose, um, he is horizontal, whereas the deer and the elk are vertical. But the finished quilt is 72 inches square, so it's the same size regardless of the animal that you choose. So. Here is the pillow that I made, and I'm going to go over this in the video cast as well. So you can get lots of use out of that one pattern that's included with the full kit. And another thing with this mousse, um, I did stippling uh, around the entire quilt front and back, all free motion, and I will be showing you that. Um, I also did micro stippling along the moose's antlers. And then I use sulky filleted thread for the moose's face. And I did that all free motion as well. So you're gonna see all of that in the video cast with multiple cameras set up so we can get up close and personal to the needle and you can see what's going on. So be sure to register for the Wilderness Wonder applique video cast. This all was designed by Ashley Huff Designs, and she just did a wonderful job creating these appliques, and they're just stunning. They would make really, really beautiful gifts for the holidays coming up. So I hope you will all join, and you can see how this comes together. It might seem challenging or look complicated, but let me just tell you, if I can do it, and if I can teach it, any one of you can do it and I'll show you how it all comes together and we'll break it down into easy manageable chunks so that not only can you feel confident doing it, but you'll create a beautiful finished piece and have a gift idea that you can knock out before the holidays. So November 9, 2 p.m., make sure you register at sewingonline.sulky.com. I also put the links in the description of today's post so if you're not seeing the full post, be sure to hit that little see more button so that you'll get links for everything that I talked about. The uh, link to the blog post and the autumn leaves template is also in the description of today's post. So you'll find it there. You can register for New Year's Eve and the Wilderness Wonder video cast. Um, I put both links in the post today. And I almost forgot to talk about our giveaway for today. Um, and so much so that I didn't even put an image of it here in my little switcher. So let me pull it up for you because for everyone who is liking, sharing, commenting, um, otherwise engaging with the post today, giving me those emojis, all of those good things, you are eligible to win the fall Poly Sparkle Thread Assortment. Let me put it on screen here for you. Okay. The Fall Poly Sparkle Thread Assortment comes with six spools of Poly Sparkle Thread. So who out there has tried the best metallic thread ever? This is a, this really acts like a polyester thread. It's a 30 weight thread and it has flecks of metallic running through it. So if you've ever had trouble sewing with metallic thread in the past, try Poly Sparkle because you can treat it just like you would treat a traditional polyester thread. Use a 9014 needle because it's that 30 weight. And these are all those pretty colors for fall. So if handwork isn't your thing, but you still want to make the thankful hoop art that I showed today, you could use that poly sparkle. Sew all of your leaves on by machine. Use all those great decorative stitches to do so. You can even either free motion or straight stitch over your lettering. And then just 
hoop it in the hoop when you're all done and put that on your wall and you would have beautiful sparkly autumn leaves on your hoop art. So one lucky winner um, that is chosen randomly out of everyone commenting, liking, sharing, engaging with the post today, either on Facebook or YouTube, is eligible to win our fall poly sparkle thread assortment. So if you ever want to try out a new thread at Sulky, getting one of these six pack thread assortments is a really great way to get a bunch of colors that are complementary for the most part, usually, and you save a little bit of money by getting one of these thread assortments. So great, great idea. All right, loving the colors. <laughs> Perfect, love and fall, beautiful colors. And yes, it does work for machine embroidery designs. You just wanna make sure that your machine embroidery doesn't isn't too dense, doesn't have too much um, fill stitch in the design. So you wanna choose like an open, airy um, machine embroidery design if you're going to swap in a 30 weight thread because for the most part, embroidery designs are digitized for 40 weight thread. So if you decide to swap in a heavier thread, it may not perform as well as a 40 weight thread would. So do a test stitch out, pick a portion of the design you intend to use and use the poly sparkle and see if it's going to overlap itself or if it's going to sew out quite nicely. Um, lettering designs that don't have satin stitches that are a series of running stitch, red work designs, outlined motifs, those will work um, or should work with the poly sparkle. So just keep those things in mind. All right. Suzanne says, is poly sparkle an abrasive thread like metallic thread? Do you need a metallic needle? Um, in all of the testing that I have done, you don't need a metallic needle for the poly sparkle. I do slow my machine speed down like I would when working with a metallic or sliver or hollow shimmer thread, but I find you don't have um, as much breakage or stretching that you could maybe experience with, let's say, a flat metallic thread like the hollow shimmer. Um, so I use it just like I would a polyester thread. I just use a larger needle to accommodate that heavier weight. So I use the 9014 needle and then slow my machine speed down. So those are the, the, the sort of modifications that I do when working with the poly sparkle. Um, you can use a top stitch needle. Uh, that works really great with the poly sparkle. I've also even used a 9014 embroidery needle depending on the fabric that I'm working with. Uh, and that has also helped. All right. Making sure that I am keeping up on the questions here. If I have missed your question and you need an answer today, please reach out to us at info at sulky.com and just shoot us an email. Um, we are happy to answer your questions and troubleshoot anything with you if you're having trouble with your projects or um, Sulky products. All right. And yes, the Poly Sparkle would work great with snowflakes. This would look really pretty with some white snowflake uh, motifs cut out and maybe you write let it snow down here and that would be really cute. There are so many different ideas. I want to see um, I want to see everything that you create and all the hoop art that you decide to do after today's show. So <laughs> send us your pictures. We always want to see what you create with either our projects, our patterns, or our products. All right, Denise says the Poly Sparkle works well in my multi-needle machine. So that's great. Okay, I, I think I'm caught up, but again, if I didn't get to your question today, be sure to reach out to us at info at sulky.com. I also always go back into the comments and try to filter through and get everybody's question answered. So keep them coming. And again, 
I will pick a winner um, tomorrow afternoon for the fall poly sparkle thread assortment. So keep those comments coming, your likes, your shares, your loves, your uh, emojis, and you could win a poly sparkle. All right. I hope to see you all at the Wilderness Wonder video cast on November 9th. And again, get in there early and register for New Year's Eve. Get your kit ordered from Sally Tomato so that everything's ready to go. Um, I'm so looking forward to having our pajama party on New Year's Eve with each and every one of you. So have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will see you next week for the 100th episode of So What? We need some applause. Next week is our 100th episode, so be sure to tune in because I'm going to have some super special prizes to celebrate 100 episodes of So What? All right. I'll see you all next week and have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope you create something beautiful and have fun at your sewing machines. I'll see you all later.